And then four years later, around 2005, I, um, I went to New York for a few weeks to help with actually Shenyun Performing Arts. Uh, NTD Television was at the initial stages of helping with the media uh, sponsorship and, and so on. So I went over to help with you know, strategy and marketing and, as a volunteer. And then two weeks became three months. And then at the end of the three months, I said, why not just move my business, my life to New York and, and uh, it's where I could be uh, in this you know, incredible city, New York, and also be able to help and volunteer for NTD Television. At, the st- at that stage, they were opening up uh, different language news programs. You know, it was Asia Brief, now it's China News. Um, so that was exciting time and kind of fell into producing and hosting all different things, you know, talk shows and including even the you know, International Chinese Culinary Competition, which you know, was a lot of fun. Okay. And then three years ago, 2009, July, July 2009, I met Michael at this uh, book signing uh, nonprofit launch of Asia Vision Foundation in mm-hmm. New York. And I met his girlfriend first, actually, and he, she introduced me. She's going to meet Michael. Uh, he's the award-winning director of Tibet Beyond Fear, and he would love to hear more about what you're doing because I told her a little bit about NTD. And I said, that'd be great. And that night, you know, we shook hands, you know, and said, let's make a film called Free China. Because before that, I said to Michael, we all agreed on this. You know, if you want to help free Tibet, you've got to help free China first. Hmm. And then when we shook hands, let's make a film called Free China. So that began, the, began this, the process. I gave Jennifer's book to Michael to read, and uh, he did his own independent research for at least six months. You know, it was, we were, he was still very busy with different projects, and uh, as I was as well. And then next, the, the following year, around April 2010, was when we started writing the synopsis. Right, if you're wondering how do you start a film or a documentary, you start with a one- or two-page summary of the vision of the story. And then from there, we... Uh, wrote a more comprehensive business plan and how to, you know, bigger, longer-term goals and what type of team we needed and how much money and so on and so forth. And then um, July 2010, Jennifer called me and said, and she was in Australia at the time, and she says, I'm coming to Washington, D.C. for a uh, speaking engagement. She would be speaking at the Capitol, right? And I said, wow, what a, what a wonderful opportunity because we had to consider flying back to... Australia, the whole team, the crew, Michael, it would be a lot more expensive. And then he said, Let's, I said to Michael, we don't have any money yet. I haven't raised a single cent, but this is such a great opportunity. Jennifer's flying here. You know, we could shoot half the you know, documentary in a week, perhaps, with you know, interviews. And Charles was nearby in New Jersey. And he thought, didn't take much time to think. He said, let's do it. Okay. We actually only have ten minutes. We have to uh, to be a little bit um, short here. Now, now, let me let me ask Michael here. During the during the course, how how much time does did it take for you to produce the film? I think start to finish uh, from when we began filming, um, from when we began filming to to ending filming with the production. That was I'd say nine months actually. That which I, I like that number because it's um, you know it's like giving birth actually nine months. Huh. Um, the process was over a two year period. So, what's the most challenging part when you produce the the film? The um, Kian did a remarkable job uh, raising the money for the film and enlisting NTD with a tremendous amount of in kind support as a co production partner. Um, the the most difficult thing of the film was the footage that was smuggled out of China. People risked their lives. And so that was the toughest stuff to get. And um, we have a, you know, an unbelievable uh, gratitude and respect uh, for the people that would risk their lives to get the footage out that's in this film. Mm. Yeah, Kion, on add. Yeah, so we finished the film uh, last year, the 53-minute version. We, um, the process with film distribution and marketing, you go through film festivals, and we were very fortunate to win a whole string of awards. But now the focus this year is not besides the private screenings we've had such tremendous support all around the world it's been voluntarily translated into like 26 languages there's been hundreds wow. of private screenings from google headquarters even we were there yesterday yeah. google invited I, us to to show the film I didn't to uh, mention that okay us congress to you know european parliament a uh, lot of support around the world 
uh, at, the, at the grassroots level. And then what we're hoping is in June, in summer this year, we'll open it theatrically in cinemas and on the internet so people can watch it. And then the, the ultimate goal is to spread this film into China. So, Michael, what do you wish to accomplish with this film? What's your goal? The goal is to um, help bring uh, freedom to China and to do that by uh, allowing uh, free information to flow into China. Um, and we focus on that film. We focus on that very heavily in the film. And the, uh, so we promote uh, organizations like the Global Internet Freedom Consortium because they're able to break down the firewall and get uh, free information to millions of people a day. And if we can uh, get them more servers, they can get it to tens of millions, which many people believe will be a tipping point to uh, hasten the day of bringing freedom inside China and other repressive regimes. Yeah. And another thing I want to add uh, in terms of the, you know, the, the mission or the main objective of the film, through Jennifer and Charles's incredible story, uh, their story of family and sacrifice and their self-discovery, their, their revival of their own culture, their re- how they how they dis- rediscovered, you could say, their own cultural heritage uh, through Falun Gong. And I think the message we want to share inside China is that so much has been destroyed in terms of our culture. 5,000 years of traditional Chinese culture has been you know, destroyed by communism and the whole communist system over the last 60 years. And I think it's so important that through their story that we can inspire people to remind the average Chinese person to what humanity is about, what to be human, to be compassionate, to be truthful. These are this basic uh, fundamental principles that have always been part of not just Chinese culture, but the universal culture. And I think it's such a critical point uh, that you know China with information and economy and wealth, that's great. But if we don't remind ourselves with our moral principles and just basic human principles, uh, then we cannot truly progress as, as, a, as a nation or as a world. Um, let me ask this question. Can the film really change the world? Was there any like a previous experience? Yeah, that's a great question. There's... Um there are films that, uh, documentary films particularly, that really raise consciousness on issues that then ultimately uh, affect policy and uh, raise money for causes that help to save lives um, and free people. So here, um, by raising awareness about what people can do uh, to help uh, Global Internet Freedom Consortium, that really can help free China. Mm. That could have a huge impact. And um, another issue is uh, with um, Charles Lee. He was making uh, Homer Simpson slippers in his prison camp in China. And when people hear that, they're outraged. And um, we're working on that issue as well to uh, mobilize many people to sign a petition and put pressure on legislators to enforce the existing memorandum of understanding to ban the importing of goods made with prison slave labor. So those are very two concrete examples that actually we can, we can do. Hmm. I also agree. I mean, I, I think the, the, the purpose of a film... The wonderful thing about the film is that you can really move people. You've got beautiful music, Tony Chen, what a genius from Sound of Hope. But at the same time, when people get inspired, they can take action. That's the key. When people watch the film, it can spread to millions of people on social media, internet, television. And then the key is, what do people do about mm-hmm. it? Hopefully in a peaceful way. Uh, I have to ask this question. So for most people, how to see this movie? 30, se- 30 seconds. Uh, contact Sound of Hope because they sometimes do private screenings. They're free, but wait for June, all right? Because in June, we're going to release it in many different cities, but you can watch it on the internet in Chinese, uh, subtitled as well in many different languages. High respect for both of you, and uh, sorry, it's the end of the year. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. FreeChinaMovie.com. FreeChina. FreeChinaMovie.com. Free China. Free China. Free China. Free China.